All right, guys. Hello. Welcome to Imprint Breakdowns. Um, yeah, we're just really going to be talking about this. Um, we're talking about the sermon that was preached on yesterday, on Sunday. And um, we're just going to break down the sermon on holiness and what it preached about. Um, I'm Ayolua, and I'm here with... Anka. Yeah. And Tayo. Lovely. All right. How are you guys doing? You guys good? Yeah, we're good, bro. Yeah. Bless, man. Bless. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. Um, yeah, we're really just going to jump into straight really into what, what he spoke about on holiness. And um, he really started with talking about how at the beginning, really because of the fall and how um, sin really came into the world, we have lost or we did lose our holiness before Christ came. And um, mm-hmm. various things were stolen from us from what he was explaining. And um, I just wanted to ask you guys in your lives or personal lives or just general experience, what does it look like or what did it look like? where you didn't have Christ and what holiness looked like stolen from you. Um, if you guys have any personal experiences, what would you guys say? Mm-hmm. Uncle, you can go first. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Love, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're going to have similar responses to this, but um, yeah. I'll probably go with something different then. Um, I was reading the script that Wally spoke on and in first in, in Colossians chapter one, verse twenty, it says, "And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven." And as I was reading that, I just, I just felt how um, through the fall of man, we almost lost our connection and our relationship with God. And uh, through that, because of that sin, we became unholy. If, if that's even a word. Mm. Um, but then what Jesus did, like it says, through his blood, we, will be, we were able to reconnect with God and now we're able to walk with him just like he did in the garden. Um, and I think that's one way how we have, Jesus, recon, Jesus reconciled um, all things to himself. And I think because of that, now we can walk in holiness like what he was, was speaking about. Yeah. Uh, um, it's not that we have to grow in holiness, but that Jesus brought it all for us. When he justified um, us on the cross by his blood, um, yeah, I think, I think that's what I would say. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, um, I believe the the main effect of a lack of awareness of your holiness is your lack of worth. Mm. How you express that in your life through the things that you are allowed to defile you, you know. Mm. Um, so if I put it this way because I didn't have an, a realization of, of my, my worth in Christ and the standard that I was created to, to live in, because in my own reality, I was not holy, I allowed unholy things to enter into my life. In it. So mm. in this way that I'm wearing this white shirt, I wouldn't go and eat anything messy because there's a possibility that this shirt will be stained. But mm. in my reality, the shirt was already stained and ruined and whatever it is. So I was indulging in porn. I was indulging in that with life with girls, indulging in drugs, like anything, because I didn't have a standard yeah. to, to justify my worth. I didn't set myself apart because I thought I was, I could indulge in anything. Mm. I didn't know how precious my, my life was to God. So I think, yeah, that's the rea- reality of the loss or a lack of awareness of, mm. of the holiness you are called to, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I really, I hear that because um, with me or in my experience, I would say, I guess I found Christ kind of early in my life. So it wasn't really a thing of um, necessarily the actual fact of not being holy, but like Tyre and Anka were saying, really about the understanding of being holy, I didn't really have. Mm. So it was really one of those ones that I really like the example of like the, the white shirt. Because it's one of those ones where if I talk about, for example, when it was talking about how in our relationship with God, that was stolen from us and if we don't know that we have that now that we're in christ uh, we don't realize that we are holy and that we do have a relationship mm-hmm. with god um i didn't understand how god loved me and because i didn't understand how god loved me i didn't know what kind of love to expect from relationships yeah. around you know what yeah. I mean? and especially with my relationship with god really um yeah man i didn't i really i felt almost like he hated me kind of thing and it <laughs> kind of put a genuine insecurity in me just in general life and then with mm-hmm. like friendships, um, with relationships with girls, whatever the case may be, it was really like, your standard is already low. It's like people talk about how, um, I, I see a lot, especially on social media, how girls say that 
girls need a father because they understand that that's their first love and they will never expect anything less from a man in the future. Mm. If you don't understand how you are loved in the first place by your heavenly father and your relationship with him, you don't know. That's good. So that's, that's, that's mm. I guess, one example. But there's many other ways. But um, yeah, that's what I would say from my experience. Um, but I guess from that and getting into our understanding of how Christ makes us holy, um, I guess seeing as that's the foundation for a Christian life, what does that look like to you guys? Mr. Onks. Uh-huh. No, I thought you could do this one now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, foundation, what does that look like? Yeah. I think it's a process of acknowledging, realizing, understanding, and then actualizing it. Mm. Um, so those stages, I believe, are mm. uh, what Christ takes us through when he exposes us to the first reality that who the sun sets free is free indeed. Mm. So meaning we are no longer slaves to our sins. I believe that's um, in John 3, 6, 36. Um, who the sun, or John 8, 36 rather, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Um, mm. And I think once you know and understand you've been free and freed indeed, you no longer have to live in the bondage compelled to, to live out the desires of your flesh. You know, um, in First Peter 1, I believe it speaks about how now that we know that we have been free, we should use this grace and this empowerment to reshape our lives, to live and walk towards the holiness and the reality God has purchased for us. And then he goes on to say this verse that everybody knows, for be holy because he is holy in it. Because mm. God says, be holy for I am holy. Meaning we now have been set free from that life of bondage, have the realization that he has called us to a standard to be set apart and empowered us by his grace to do so. And then from this understanding and this reality, I think we should then enter into a place of understanding. You know, um, I believe in Proverbs 24, it speaks about how with wisdom, a house is built, but with an understanding, it's been established. Mm. Meaning the wisdom of Christ has been made known to us, has built us, built us as a house for, for his dwelling. But to establish this house, we need to understand first who we are and who he's called us to be in it. And those two are parallel. They're the same things, but it's like a mirror. Who you are is what you see in this mirror, but he reflects that image. He's the, he's the mirror that we look at. We were created mm. his image. So we look at who he is and then we understand that that's who we are. It's that like the mirror parallel and showing us the, the truth in it. Um, and from there, when you truly understand it and it's been established as a reality, I believe understanding is what makes a foundation so sure and makes it so mm. strong because nothing can be, it can't be taken away from you. You no longer have to prove yourself. You no longer have to, to justify yourself to the world, but you live expressing the understanding of the reality that you live in. So I understand I'm a Nigerian male, so I live from that understanding. <laughs> no one can come to me and yeah, say, yeah. Bro, you're you're Caucasian. Because <laughs> I understand the truth that has been has been made known to me and I can respond from there with confidence, with a boldness, you know. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, Onko? Yeah, just to add on to what Ty was saying, I think another element of our foundation alongside understanding, um, I think is hope. Because mm. in verse twenty verse twenty three it says, If you continue in your faith establish and firm and do not move from the hope of that in the gospel. Um, Yeah, I think hope is such a strong part because our hope is in Jesus, you know, that one day is going to come back, Mm. you know, that he has set us free, he has redeemed us, you know, all these things. And then it it says in the start, in your faith, establish, if you continue in your faith, establish and firm. Mm. Um, I think this really saying your faith and your hope mixed with your understanding really creates this foundation where now Jesus can build up on something that's secure you mm. know we all know that parable if when the wind came and the person who built his house on the rock stayed firm but the one it didn't understand it, it you know it broke apart mm. and so when your when your house is built upon a strong foundation jesus can i build upon that reassured and trusting that whatever yeah. he does through you you know it's not going to just fall apart yeah. you know like one thing god taught me from you know he loves everyone equally but he will but he doesn't trust everyone equally you know think about think about trust is you grow in trust with god Mm. You're not going to reveal everything to everyone, but so when when you see that your foundation is secure within Him and His mm. Word, and and you know so good. your faith is growing within Him, that means He can trust you with deep revelation and more things with Him. And as you continue to be obedient to His voice, He can trust you more. And mm. so when you build upon that foundation, you you become established and firm. 
and that mm. hope that and that hope that held down the gospel is what's going to take you you know further and mm. i believe all those things together like how you're saying understanding you know understanding understanding god's word mm. all these things them things together help you live our life that is holy and sanctified in the process of you know sanctification um because you all know even though that jesus said that paul says here that we are made holy through through jesus mm. we can still sin you know and i think it's that process of sanctification where um jesus mm. helps us you know step away from the, the desires of the flesh and live yeah. a life where we just want to please god I and mean, we want god to delight in us and have favor in us you know like the bible says that with daniel god had delighted in him and a favor upon him mm. you know and i think we all should aspire to live that kind of life where god delights in us you know and um i think yeah awesome yeah no thank you thank you guys for that because um really with that when talking about the foundation i really see it as the fact of to be fair i struggled with that for for a while and um even until like recently i was trying to f- not necessarily figure it out but trying to get an understanding of it so mm-hmm. like um i was spoken about earlier like having knowledge of something that could tell you literally okay mm-hmm. uh, seven times eight is 56 but if you don't know how multiplication works, it's just you know that, but you can't grab that. So if someone told you it was 84, uh, cool, uh, you grab that one as well. Do you know what I mean? So it's one of those ones where there's a need for a deep understanding. Yeah. And uh, as far as holiness and the foundation, understanding that, okay, Jesus gives that to you. It's a free gift from Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. you grow from that. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very kind of like what he was saying about flipping the switch flipping the situation because um it, it can it's i guess it's easy um if you don't really kind of seek understanding from the holy spirit or understand what's going on it's easy to believe okay boom be holy as i am holy is like okay no i need to try <laughs> match this to myself but at the end of the day you are really he said be holy as i am holy you can never mm-hmm. be in your own strength as mm-hmm. holy as god is holy Mm-hmm. Unless you backtrack a bit and look at the verses beforehand, and it's because of the fact that he is giving you this gift, I have given you this mm-hmm. foundation. Um, so you are holy now, mm-hmm. act as such. Again, back to the white shirt metaphor that I was talking about. Your shirt is white, please don't drop black. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of what you already have. Yeah. Um, that's that's the way I see it, kind of thing. And um, I really wanted to break down the, the various things I was speaking about in Colossians from um, what was read on Sunday. Um, it talks about being holy as being set apart, being flawless without blemish and um, being restored back to innocence. And I wanted to see if you guys um, had anything more to say about like being holy specifically and being set apart and what that foundation looks like to each and every one of you. Mm-hmm. I think um, what comes to mind is it's the reality and the awareness of what's been given to you. Mm. So we've been reconciled from a life of, of sin and, and shame and guilt and blemish. And as the bride, we've been called into a new reality where we've been sanctified by his word. Key, the word of God sanctifies us. That's the only thing that mm. sanctifies us. And to be sanctified is to be washed it's the word, mm. word that does the washing. And it's, it's good to feel like you've been washed by ingesting and, you know, really connecting to the word of God. That's one key thing that came to mind. But as we're being reconciled and we've been reconciled unto him, we are now given the opportunity to behold him and to, to see him. You know, I mean, Second Corinthians 3, I believe, it speaks about that with unveiled faces, we're now able to behold his glory. Mm-hmm. I think in the NLT version, it says, says to see and then to reflect it, meaning we've mm-hmm. been given such a privilege to be those who are carriers of his glory. That's a privilege. In the like manner of Moses, who came down from the, from the mountain and he was transfigured, his face was shining. Days after he had had the encounter, days after, he was still shining. But we have the opportunity to have that encounter daily. So I think it's one, seeing that as the, as the honor that it is and the privilege. And no one comes into the courts of God without, without having the, the recognition that deserves that place, you know, meaning he's recognized us as sons who can walk into his court. And you wouldn't walk into God's court with just like a cap and like anything you're, you're wearing. Hey. Oh, no, sorry, no, <laughs> no disrespect. <laughs> but I mean, in the, <laughs> in the spirit, you're not, you know, um, you're not just wearing idol clothes. He's clothed you in garments of glory, you know. He's clothed you. Let's look at the prodigal son, for example. 
where he returned. The, the, the father put a signet ring on him. He clothed him in beautiful robes and garments and, and gave him the, 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 the clothing of one worthy of the position that he had in it, meaning we're clothed in white now. We have that glorious clothing he's given us. Now, if, like I mentioned earlier, I know this white shirt is, 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 is not just clean, but it was a precious gift given to me that I knew there was no way I had stains all over this and there was no way in myself I could remove the stains. But God gave me a whole new gown, garments of white and clothing where before I, like the prodigal son, I probably already had this, but threw it all away for the, for the world. And I came back and he said, you know what? I love you. I'm going to reconcile you onto myself and restore you. Knowing I've been restored and knowing to the degree that I've been restored will motivate me to respond to that restoration. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not by any might or by power of my being, but it's by my response from love and the understanding of what he's given to me. Um, I'm going to make two last points. Um, we see that in, in Matthew 5, 17, um, we see that Jesus then says, no, 20 rather, he then says, now, if your righteousness is not that of the Pharisees and um, the, the religious scholars, by no means you will enter into the, the, the kingdom. What? That's, that's a, some, I, you would hear that instantly and think, oh, those guys that he didn't like, cool, their, their righteousness was nothing. No, these guys stuck to the law. Mm. Let's, use, let's use Paul as the example of someone who stuck to the law. He was a man word for word. You see in Philippians 3, he speaks about by every letter. I, 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 I obey to the law. He was one of the highest in, in his position. But he says, I count that all of, all of that worthless in comparison to the righteousness and the glory of Christ, meaning we in ourselves can't reach righteousness, righteousness. But the righteousness Christ has brought for us is the one that we hold on to. And we receive that by faith and we live in it by faith. So we are wearing the righteousness of Christ. That's an awareness that every Christian believer needs. Mm. But then um, you now know that in the Exodus, it speaks about the priest who wear the priestly garments cannot defile their garments. And in, in Revelations 22, it speaks about how those who are wearing garments of white will be those who come into the, the gates of heaven, who come into the kingdom of God. Yeah. So it's knowing the privilege, the position we've been given, and the worth that it carries. You're going to protect the privilege, the position, and the worth. You're going to protect that if you know, if you know the, the capacity that it holds. I could probably buy this particular shirt again. Mm. So if I stay in it, cool. Could probably buy it again. I ain't got peas, but I'm just saying I could probably yeah. buy it again. But the garments of, of glory given to us by the, the Father are something that you can't purchase with silver or gold. You can't just easily work your way back into reconciliation. It was the blood that brought us there. It's knowing how precious that blood is and living from that awareness truly that, wow, so much has been done for me. And I, I'm so in love with the giver. I'm so in love with him. His gifts are great. The white shirt is great. But the giver is who I respond to. And when we respond in that place with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, key ingredient, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, then the, the journey becomes very, very different. I, I believe very, very different. You know, he leads, leads us into the understanding and the truth. But they're all in his word. And if we don't know it, we're running, running on false claims and things that someone else has told us. Like you mentioned, understanding is not just knowing two times two times two is four. It's knowing the steps to reach there, you know, and believing that everyone who believes in the son, not just knows the son and knows what he did, but believes in it and puts their trust. And as Uncle mentioned, their hope, hope, you know, Christ in me, the hope of glory, the hope. That's, I think those elements, when you put all of what I've just said together and more, of course, we're still exploring. You find a reality that you don't take lightly. You, I repeat that, you can't take it lightly. It's a beautiful thing we've been given. Amen. Yeah, Onx, you got anything to share? Um, I think Ty said most of what I would have said. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but there's something to add on. A um, mm. couple of things, actually. I, I think I love that, that you're using the idea of a white garment. If I remember cor correctly, like I think it's Revelations 1 or 2, one of the rewards that Jesus spoke about to wow. the churches who um, like stand steadfast in the faith mm -hmm. is they will wear white garments. Wow. You know, and I think that's not just for that church, that specific church, but that's for every believer. 
No. You know, if you do, if you go on and read Revelation, I think it's chapter one or two, one of the churches he speaks to, and he literally says that because you were steadfast in in your journey in your faith, you didn't um you know go to the left or to the right. Um, one of your rewards is to not only sit on the throne and have this crown, etc., but also mm. um, and the white. I think literally signified, um, I think it was either holiness or righteousness, something like that. Mm. Um, I can't remember correctly, but um, so I love that using the whole idea mm. and without even realizing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but also, I think in terms of like being set apart and consecration, I think a huge part is um, living like in the world, but not of the world if that makes sense um side plug we actually did a podcast of that you know so if you listen to it go on imprint really? podcast Spotify, WhatsApp, <laughs> whatever apple, apple podcast but um you know is that consecration is living you know in the world but not of the world you know so living in such a way like i use daniel again he lived in the kingdom and he lived probably in the most secular environment probably even more so that we do but he never defiled himself with that environment mm. you know he didn't even eat the king's food for example, and that's one reason God delighted in him. You know, um, he, stayed, he kept himself pure and holy away from all these things that would defile him. Um, so yeah, I think a huge part of just having this blameless, you know, um, and, and you know, no blemishes on you is just being set apart from, you know, yeah. from the things the world indulges in, etc. That's amazing. That's amazing. Because really, like, again, you guys have said most of really what was to be said about that. But um, one thing I can, one thing that comes to mind, I read this in a book a long time ago. Um, I think, I don't think it was a true story. I think it was fiction. But um, it's certainly like the French Revolution when they kind of um, took down the monarchy. And um, there was a story of like, he was a prince and he was just one member of the royal family. Apparently they had called them all. And um, what they did was they took this this son away and um, they kind of set him with like some people that were in like gangs or just what people would have described as low lives back in the day. And um, they gave him everything. They they gave him, um, they, they showed him all the worst things in life. So like gluttony, um, sex and all that kind of stuff. But he was very young. He was like maybe like from the age of nine or something and he was growing with them and he lived with them. And um, he just never really, like you were saying about Daniel, he never really indulged in these things. And um, as he grew older, one of the people that kind of he lived with just asked him, like, why is it that we, like, and they did it on purpose. They've tried to kind of entice him on these things. And he never, he never agrees to it. Why, why is that the case? And he said, um, no matter how many times or how much you guys try to kind of tell me who I am, I've been told I was born to be a king. And these are just things that kings don't do. And that is um very, even though it wasn't like in a Christian book or anything like that, it's a very, it's a great example of how Christians are to live. Mm-hmm. We were, we are born again into kingships, uh, into kingship. The Bible says we are kings and priests. And because of that, there's things we just don't do because that's just not what kings do. And um, I think it's a beautiful summary of just really all that we've said, even the idea of being set apart. Um, because it's very, it's, it's amazing to know that we are set apart and set apart from what, but then it's good to also know what we are set apart into. And it's to really, like we've all been talking about, understand what the treasures are and the joys are in Christ. Understand what being a Christian means. Why is it such a beautiful thing? Why is it that people rejoice in this thing? Understanding that. And I think it's a beautiful journey that Christ himself takes us on. And, um, yeah, man, so it's a beautiful thing to really, really understand and enjoy. And I think um, I think that the last point that we can really, really uh, dive into is really talking about how what we've really said, how the identity then determines how we act and go on. And um, yeah, I believe if any of you have anything to say on that, it'd be beautiful to hear that. Um, yeah, I guess one of the scriptures that Wally read um, closing chapter three, uh, issue verse 12, it says, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Um, and actually, no, before that says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's literally just that, you know, walking in these things, walking in how Jesus would walk if he mm-hmm. was here right now, you know, walking in his shoes, what, what would he do? 
in every given situation, circumstance, etc. Um, you know, like in what area in your life are you not showing compassion to the people around you? You know, in what area of your life are you not showing kindness and are you are you are you being humble in every area? Mm. All, all these kind of things. Like, are you having patience in the things God's called you to be? You know, you could be, are you trying to rush your calling or not? Mm. Yeah, those kind of things. Um, but you know, yeah, I think I think that scripture pretty much sums it up for me. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Beautiful. Ty, you got anything to add lastly? I think I agree completely with that. Um, and I think the the relationship that we've been given is the first step to anything that we we are called to build, you know, ensuring that we understand that relationship and interact with it daily. I think that's the that's the it's probably one of the biggest keys to to walking away from from the from the old life and walking with the new life because as we grow into that relationship, we understand God's heart on the things of the old and how truly detestable they were to God. How mm. our old life was truly detested. That's a big word, fam. Detestable to God, you know. But nonetheless, he pursued us for so long to draw us back onto himself. You know, that's a, that's a great story. That's a great reality that if we interact with it daily, we just fall more and more in love with it. And as you fall more in love, in love with it, you respond from that place of love by the Spirit's empowerment. You know, the flesh is weak, the flesh profits of nothing, but the Spirit is willing, it's the Spirit that quickens. So I think relationship, understanding that relationship, interacting with it daily, no matter how continuous it may seem, it's the foundation, it's one of the foundations. And by the Spirit alone, by the Holy Spirit alone, that's the only way into entering into the truth of God. It's, the Bible speaks about it's the Spirit that, that, that leads us to the truth. It's the spirit of truth and he will guide us into all truths, you know? And that was when Jesus was saying that he has more things to tell us what he cannot right now. So it's this Holy Spirit who will come and unveil more of these truths unto us, meaning there's still more things in these details that we've heard and, you know, but there's more he wants to show and it's that relationship, spirit-led relationship, faith, hope, trust in him, devotion to him that brings everything else understand the, how detestable the past was and truly comprehend the glory to come and how beautiful that is, you know. Mm, amen, amen. Yeah, that's really amazing. And I think with all of that, we've really, yeah, we've, we've dived really deep into this. Um, I think we can just close in prayer. So, um, Onko, if you just want to lead us in prayer, and we can just close this beautiful time together. Yeah, sure. Um, Lord, we thank you for this time that we will to come together and it's and break down the sermon that Wally spoke um, on Sunday um, and we just pray Lord that everyone listening that you will take us into this journey of becoming more sanctified and consecrated in you Lord you will help us to be set apart and go deep on this journey where you um, help us to live compassionate lives and gentle lives and lives of humility and patience Lord. you will teach us what it truly looks like to um, live a life that you delight in and live a life that we detest the things of old Lord um, we thank you that all you're already doing with us, Lord, that you're already sanctifying us and making us pure in all that we do. Um, and we thank you that one day that our lives will be a testimony to everyone who um, looks back on our journey and on our life. And yes, I pray that, Lord, every single person listening to this um, breakdown, that we will all leave a legacy that points to you, Lord. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.